Hello everybody and welcome to today's Faith Moments. So I'm just going to share a few thoughts on something that God was reminding me about today. And I want to share my pictures on the screen. And it's very simply an encouragement from the scriptures to fan into flame, to fan into flame. And again, I've said it a few times now, but this last whatever it is, 15 months or so, have been very strange times. And I think all of us have got tired or worn in different ways. And maybe it's a time just to allow God to search our hearts and to help us to move on in this next part of the journey. In 2 Timothy, Paul is writing to a, a young Timothy, a young disciple, a young leader. And Paul says to Timothy, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. So Paul's reminding Timothy that he knows the faith that's in him. He knows the grounding and the history he has in his family of faith. There's a sure root here. And then Paul goes on to say, for this reason, because of everything that's been invested in you, everything that's been given to you, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Paul says, because of everything that's been given to you, it's been invested in you, the hope we have in you, I, Paul, remind you, Timothy, to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through, through the laying on of your, my hands. And I thought, well, first of all, why does God need to remind Timothy? Has he forgotten? Have, has he been discouraged? Have things happened that have maybe made him lose some of that confidence, the gift that, of God that's in him? Why does he have to be reminded to fan it into flame? I don't know. I don't know what uh, Timothy's journey had been, but maybe today we need to be reminded to fan into flame the gift of God which is in us, given to us, not for us, but for others. And Paul goes on to say to Timothy, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. The spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. But back to this. For this reason, Paul reminds Timothy, I remind you, to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you. The gift of God, which is in you as you're listening now, is a gift that's not just for you. It's for his church and for his world. It's a gift that's a tool, it's an enabling, it's a, an ability through God, with God, in God, to reach out and to, for God to be able to do his work through you. And just as when a, a coal on the fire just gets a little bit cool or, or is pushed to one side and loses that um, energy, that life of the fire in it. Sometimes we can get just discouraged or pushed to one side or just having been through a tough time, as in the last period that we've been through. Maybe we've lost some of that spark, some of that confidence, some of that energy, some of that, and even the word energy, people think, oh my goodness, I'm so tired. How about we've lost a little bit? And how about God needs to remind us to fan into flame his gift that's each, in each one of us. And how do we fan into flame? Well, in my living room, I've got a lovely log fire. And when it's a bit cooler, I like to light it. It's not very often because it just takes a bit of work and I'm lazy, but I do. And sometimes I might light it and it goes out and then I'm trying to blow the flame up again. I'm trying to blow it to try and get it going. If I'm super lazy, I use fire lighters, but if I can blow it, it's quite fun just blowing and blowing and blowing and seeing if you can get the spark to catch again. See if you can get the spark to catch the paper and set the fire going again. It's just a bit of fun, really. But to fan into flame, to blow into flame, to move into flame, the gift of God, which is in you. I just want to point out here, this fanning into flame is our action. It's not God's. God has put his gift in you. Your action and mine is to fan it into flame and to remember to do that. God's already put his gift in you and in me 
and we may ask for new gifts, but he's already given us gifts which need to be fanned into flame. And we're the ones that have to do the fanning. If we just sit and wait for God to wake us up, I think we'll be here quite a while. God's saying, fan, us in, fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you. You and I have a responsibility, an ability and a privilege to fan into flame the gift that he's put inside of us, for us and for others. But how do we do that? Just personally, this is my own sort of bit of a journey on this. I actually think that we'll do it most easily when we see a need that we want to help with. If it's just for us, I think we can get a bit stuck there. But if we're wanting God to fan the flame, to help us to fan the flame of the gift he's put in us, if it's for somebody else, if it's to meet a need, to help someone, to do something, to reach out with God's love, I think we've got a better chance of it working because there's a reason for it. These are tools. The gift of God in you is a tool to use for others. It's not really just for you. It's for others. It's for God to show himself through you and to use you. So for me personally, when I see a need or God shows me a need and I think, God, I don't think I've got anything to give to that. Will you help me? Will you fan into flame? Will you move me again? Will you equip me? I think I have a sense that that prayer's got a better chance of being answered because it's not for me, it's for somebody else. So I think to fan into flame is first of all, maybe to look out and to see the need around, to see a neighbour that needs a phone call or to see someone that needs a visit or to see maybe something that you could do with a piece of a drawing or a piece of art or a few words on a paper just to encourage somebody else. And as you see a need, then you, it's Lord, please help me to be an answer to this. Paul was writing to Timothy because he was in a position in the church where he was needing to give out. And Paul was saying, come on, fan into flame the gift of God that's in you so that you can do that. So first of all, I would say, see a need, look out, to look beyond ourselves. And then believe that God has put a gift in you. It may be a gift that's been forgotten for a while, got a bit tired for a while, got a bit uh, small for a while, but the gift's there. And just like with a spark in a fire, when you blow it and eventually it catches a paper and, and roars, that's the sort of gift that's in you. And that as you blow on that gift, as you ask the Holy Spirit to blow, then that gift will come alive in a way that maybe you've never seen before. It won't just be what it was before, it'll be more. And the more wood, the more fuel that it's put against, the more need, the more, um, and I mean need by God needed to do something with you, the more people you're asking to help, the more things that you're asking God to help you to be involved in, the more kindling, if you like, that's put around that gift, the more it will fan into flame, the greater your desire for God to use you and to be glorified in you, the greater will be the fire because there'll be more kindling, more wood, more reason for that flame to burn. But fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. And I've put there a picture of a person with a hand out and they're blowing, yes, they're blowing into, they're fanning into flame, they're blowing on the gift that God's put in them. But if you can see around that person, there's a wind, there's a movement of the Holy Spirit. And I think God's only needing us just to blow and say, Lord, will you wake me up? Would you fan into flame the gift that you've put in me? And it's a tiny little prayer, but as we pray that, I believe the power of God's spirit begins to blow on us, through us, in us. And we'll see him reawakening us, gifts and joys that maybe have gone a little bit sleepy for a while. So it's our responsibility, it's our um, privilege to fan into flame the gift that God has already put in us. The more that we want to do that for others, the more kindling I think there is for God to want to blow the fire into and the greater the gift will be. But the calling is ours to fan into flame. So I'm just going to leave a moment of quietness and maybe just quietly check your own heart. Do you believe that God's put a gift in there? Has it got a little bit lost somehow inside in what we've been going through? And do you want God to bring it alive again? If you don't, then there's no point praying. But if you do, even if you're not sure how it will be or whether you've got anything to give, if you just want God to use you, 
and to use what he's put in you. Then ask him, pray right now, that he will bring that gift alive in you. And as you're praying, you're fanning it into flames. So just pray for yourself first. What have you got in you that God's put in you that he wants to be glorified by? Just going to pray. And then let's pray together. Father, as brothers and sisters in your church, we pray for each other that you help us to fan into flame the gift that you've put in each one of us. For those of us that don't know what our gift is yet, help us to find out. For those of us that the gift's got a little bit tired or a bit weary, help us to fan it into flames. But for all of us, may this flame get bigger and bigger as we put it alongside more and more kindling and as your work is done in and through us and through your church. May you truly be glorified and your world helped. In Christ's name, Amen. It may be that you're not sure what your gift is. Take time to pray, ask God. And if you're not sure, ask somebody else or give me a ring. Let's together remember our gifts that we've already got. Fan them into flame. Put them alongside more kindling. Be used by God. And then ask him to give us new gifts as well that he may be glorified. May God bless you, keep you and use you for his glory today and always. Amen.